Hello and welcome to this screencast about development environments. What is a development environment or specifically an integrated development environment? Basically it's a tool that has some advanced capabilities for manipulating source code. So it's aware of the language you're using, be it Java or Scala or C Sharp or whatever. Has, it's aware of the fact that, that uh, a system is comprised of a number of files with possibly different um, uh, meanings or, or using different syntaxes. Um, it generally supports inter incremental compilation so that you're not having to explicitly kind of build the system or build individual files and uh, it provides usually capabilities to step through the execution of the program one line at a time so you can in inspect the state of variables at each point. There's a bunch of other facilities that it has can have, wizards, diagramming, and so forth, but but these above capabilities are really the key things you want to you want to see. Um, editors, like kind of vanilla editors like Notepad or TextPad, are are not integrated development environments because they don't generally have those kinds of language aware capabilities, as well as integration with the back end tools like um, the runtime environment, the compiler, and and so forth. So. Um, it's definitely the case that learning to use an integrated development environment is not the simplest thing. They're fairly complicated. When you see screenshots, you see all sorts of different panes with lots of different stuff in them. Um, they often take you know a few seconds to, to come up when you invoke them as opposed to almost immediately for other um, you know regular editors. And so there is kind of a tendency to want to avoid them you know when you're a, a novice developer. And part of what this module is intended to do is to give you the kind of the discipline and intellectual fervor required to suffer through the pain and, and, and effort required to, to actually become facile using an integrated development environment. And, and the benefits to that are tremendous because it means that you will be able to understand and deal with complexity far in excess of what you could do with a standard you know, vanilla editor. And that's the key thing. If you're only doing little, tiny little script programs that are 15 lines long, yeah, then an integrated development environment probably is not going to you know, provide you a lot of, of benefit. It's when you're talking about systems that are 10,000, 30,000, 100,000 lines of code, um, figuring out what you need to see in the code, how to navigate through the complexity of that 100,000 lines of code to find the 15 lines that you actually have to understand in order to solve your problem. That's where an integrated development environment that's knowledgeable about the language syntax and semantics becomes um, you know, um, incredibly useful, almost indispensable to solving those kinds of problems in any you know, short period or, or reasonable period of time. Okay. Um, a more practical reason is that oftentimes in interview situations, you're going to be asked, you know, what editor do you use, and uh, the the answer that you give could have a lot to do with where that interview goes from there. So you know, um, just to kind of bury the point, you got these simple things, you got these complicated things. The complicated things are harder to use, but you can do more things with them. Okay, with respect to compilation, if you thought about doing a notepad, what you'll find is you're, you're jumping back and forth between the, um, you know, a, a command shell window and the editor window and you're typing one thing in another and you're kind of looking in one window and trying to figure out what happens in the other window. What an integrated development environment is going to do is pull that all together so it's a kind of a seamless experience. Okay, so when you look at IDEs, what they're all going to have is support for coding navigating through the code, lots of you know, kind of quick fix facilities. When you make a mistake, you can, generally it's a little light bulb that, that almost, it's almost a uniform icon for this. There's a little light bulb, you click on the light bulb, and the, the editor is going to say, oh, you know, I see this particular problem. Do you want me to fix it by doing this, that, or the other thing? And then you just select the thing that you want it to do, and it, and it goes through and fixes it. Um, you know, support for testing and combining tests with the code that they test. Is, is an important feature, debugging as I said before, and refactoring which is an incredibly important issue. As you, design, as you design systems you generally find that the names you chose initially are not the best names for what 
the method or the class or the package or whatever is, is ultimately or now, you know, doing. But changing the name of a method or a class or a package might involve, you know, changes in 50 or 100 different files, you know, and there may be other occurrences of that string of characters that are not related to the package or the class or the method, so you don't want to change those, you know. Um, and so this idea of refactoring, having that built into the development environment is, is to me a huge win of development environments because it means that as you move through the understanding of the problem that you're trying to solve and as the system evolves over time to become more general or you know, become adapted to different circumstances, it's trivially easy to change the names of things to reflect exactly what it is they now do. And that avoids, for example, the need for extra documentation um, and it makes it easier for you and others later on to really understand what's going on. Okay, so that's a huge thing. Here's just some screenshots. I'm using Eclipse, for example, of what an IDE looks like. You know, you have these editor windows. Here's an example where there's a problem with this server properties things, and you can see the little light bulby thing. Um, and in that case, I think there wasn't an, an import statement associated with that class, so they um, fixed it. Or they, they could, the Eclipse environment could automatically insert that import statement. Here's um, a uh, an example of a test case and the little green bar on the left indicates that the test executed. The other window allows you to configure how you want those test cases to be run. For example, you know, if you want to have um, the particular you know, version of JUnit you want to use or whether you had arguments and so forth. Here's a uh, debugging window which is, shows you shows, uh, um, method being single stepped through and the state of all the variables in the stack at that point in execution, um, you know, that can be tremendously useful in understanding why things aren't working the correct way. Um, here's an example of refactoring where, um, you know, I've got this get file name, I want to change it to something different and it pops up a dialog box asking me what I want to change it to. If the system compiled before, after you get done doing refactoring, it's going to compile again. Okay. So the, the, again, you know, a lot of this class is about mechanics, a lot about uh, and a lot about doing things quickly and easily. And development environments are really important at making some very important fundamental activities easy to do. And I have examples here from reformatting code to changing method names to you know getting completions and, and so forth. Now there are build tools which are similar to IDEs. Um, but, but build tools don't support the actual de writing of code. What they're good at supporting is the building of systems independent of any specific IDE. And that's really important because in a large development project, oftentimes you don't want to dictate what IDE a specific person uses because depending on the part of the system they're working on or maybe just their own personal preference, they want to choose a different IDE than, than someone else does and, and their reasons may be appropriate. So by having a build tool that's associated with, with you know, compilation, testing, packaging, and quality assurance that's independent of the IDE, you, will, you enable people to, you enable some diversity in the, in the choice of IDEs while having a single, uniform, standardized way to actually build the system. Okay, so let me just conclude. Here's some, you know, example IDEs. NetBeans, very popular one, um, associated primarily with Java, but has extensions for C++ and a lot of other languages. Eclipse, again, a very popular, probably the most popular IDE, um, originally developed by IBM, primarily associated with Java, but has plugins for other languages as well. IntelliJ ID is is another very popular um, IDE. Uh, again, associated primarily with Java, but has plugins. For, it's, it's also has very good plugins for, for Python um, and JavaScript and, and lots of other languages as well. Whoa, um, that was crazy. Okay, um, and Visual Studio, product by uh, Microsoft, focused primarily on Microsoft languages, uh, for example, C Sharp. Um, a very, very high-performance, productive environment. A lot of people view this as the best IDE that exists. Unfortunately, um, you know, it is specific to the Microsoft environment and Microsoft languages. That's where it works the best. So um, if you're doing Microsoft development, you know, Microsoft focused development, then, then obviously Visual Studio is going to be your choice. 
There's some newcomers. Sublime is a um, an editor that's gotten a lot of um, you know interest lately. Um, I'm not quite sure why. I don't think it's um, you know my minimal experiences with it don't don't impress me as being you know it's got some amazing killer application functionality that other ones do. But you know again a very capable IDE and and um, you know, worth investigating. Perhaps it's the most appropriate one for your task. Atom is a integrated development environment produced uh, by GitHub, released in the open source community. The kind of interesting thing about this is that it uses HTML and CSS for all the formatting, um, and uh, so that you know they're they're coming from a kind of a different platform technology orientation, um, and so you might want to if you're doing a lot of HTML CSS stuff. This may be a good choice for you, but it, it is also you know appropriate for other kinds of development as well. And then the latest class of, of environments, which I think are worth really taking a close look at, are cloud-based. So Nitrous.io is a cloud-based development environment which has a embedded in the browser um, IDE. Okay, and um, and I think that there are some limitations to this model currently. Um, but it's definitely worth taking a look at for the future. This may be the future of development environments. You can do collaboration. You can do a lot of things more easily in a in a cloud-based environment uh, than you can with with uh, desktop. So um, there's my little um, overview of some of the common IDEs. My conclusions for this is basically, if nothing else, you should be convinced and aware that IDEs are going to offer tremendous advantages over simplistic text editors. You should definitely put in the pain and time required to become facile um, with them. And that there's not, I'm not gonna point you and say, you know, IntelliJ ID is the best IDE of all. Um, some people believe that, but, and, and in fact, in this class, I'm going to require you to use IntelliJ IDE, but uh, that's because it's the best for the particular technology stack that we're using in, in the class, okay? Um, and finally, I also believe that having skill with several IDEs is the best way to go. Be a little bit agnostic about it because you may find that depending on the technology stack you're using, the, you want to choose a different IDE for it. In addition, using different IDEs just gives you different mental models of how things can be, can be done um, with that technology and, and that's useful to you as well. All right, thanks a lot.